Hello and welcome everyone. This is Amy of AJC Magic TV. I welcome you in. Um, today we're just going to have um, chatting and I'm going to go over a, a small garden, flower and garden haul that I was able to get um, some items picked up for me that I really wanted to have. And we'll go show that plus some nice Easter candy haul that i would gotten for Easter. So um, that's what we'll be doing. Plus, hey, let's get to know each other. I know, like, hello, Penguin Master. Welcome in. I know, like, the Viapri Project did something I'm not trying to copy from him, but it's a great idea. I do have other topics that we can talk about. <clears throat> Welcome in, James Ryan. Thank you for joining. Hello, Amy from the city. So nice. They named it twice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so welcome in. Um, we'll see if anybody else comes in. I know T. Marie just finished. Um, there won't be a notification that comes out. So uh, feel free to share. Um, I am lacking on that. I need to get myself together and get my, um, get my stream starting to advertise out there. So we'll get going. Um, but I thought that was a great idea that they did. I'm going to welcome in Happily Ever Yaddy and Daniel of this, this Infinity. Um, I do appreciate it. Welcome in Arlene. I thought it was really cool what they did. I'm not going to ask the same questions. Maybe the jobs type of thing. But um, I will talk about other like different things that people like or have done. Welcome in, Paul Engel. I do appreciate everyone coming in. And I'll show some of the, um, a couple of the things that I got from the Flower and Garden Festival from some friends. Um, and they were able to pick it up for me, I had asked. And I will show that. So give me a moment, I just need to, get into something real quick. <clears throat> I do apologize. I'll be right with all of you. Yeah, it's not gonna work. Okay. <clears throat> I am flying to you tomorrow. Wow, James. I'm super jealous. Welcome in to Philly crew. Thank you for joining. Um, some housekeeping. Thank you to Dean of The Live Place, theliveplace.com. He also has a YouTube channel called The Live Place. He's also known as Dreamers Empire. Um, he does host my channel and many other channels on theliveplace.com. It's kind of like a TV guide to various YouTube channels. Most of them are family friendly. A lot are Disney, uh, Disney content type of related streams, but there are many other genres of um, travel and cruising and RVing so, and music. So go check out theliveplace.com with Dean um, of him. So I do thank him for um, hosting my channel. <laughs> oh, Epcot too. Yeah, that would be fun. But um, first up, I'm going to go ahead and show... Um, I had asked this our dreams, I will say. I didn't don't like to usually say who I get white stuff from, but they did. Uh, I had asked if they would pick it up. I do like the orange bird. I got the little shoulder orange bird. I probably should have had them set up and had them on my shoulder. <laughs> Welcome in Monarch Moments. So I think I will go ahead and put orange bird onto my shoulder. He will be the mascot of the evening. Um, I do have another. I, I think I um, I do have a couple other ones also um, of these. I have Remy, and I think I either have Figment or um, the Porg. I can't remember if I kept the Porg or used it in one of my youth group events because I did have a couple extras. And I know one of the kids got one of the porgs. So the orange bird. <laughs> Thank you, Arlene. 
And then the other thing I had asked them, I know they have a lot of different pins available. Um, I usually like the limited editions. Uh, and sometimes, you know, I'll look around and and uh, I may end up um, checking around, seeing if they still have any other the other ones that they add out. If not, no big deal. But I at least got the um, pass holder and or the two limited edition ones that I wanted. Um, Figment is one of my favorites. So the flower and garden figment, um, limited edition pin. I'm kind of, um, yeah, I really like the orange bird stuff that they did. Um, they had a few different things. Um, so yeah, that that is pretty cool there. But um, I had them pick up the flower and garden festival grow limited edition pin. Welcome in Anna, Isabel, and then also the flower and garden limited edition i think this was more the um official kind of pin i know they had other ones like spike the bee and different stuff that were limited release and um yeah it's always fun to like look at the merchandise i know there's a lot of stuff there that i kind of was interested but i need to like start curtailing some of my things um the magic i like the one mickey mouse magic band but i have so many magic bands that it's like i don't even use half of them anymore uh welcome in jay nashville and monarch moments and timothy rainwaters but these are the two pins that they picked up for me and um also i did a trade with them on the small world um the small world wishables. I got two of the things that they needed and they had two of the things that um, I needed. So I got the clock and the penguin. So I'll be swapping mine. I have to get them together to give that to Angela or Jeff. Well, Angela, cause she's back here where Jeff will be heading back down to Florida. So, um, <clears throat> but I at least got the whole set for the the only thing I didn't get out of the set for the small world was, I believe, the Disneyland hippo. I think it was the green one, and I got the pink one. I'm not sure which one was the Disney World and which one was the, the Disneyland hippo, but I only got one of the hippos. <clears throat> so I was able to collect all of them. Um, also, um, yeah, I should have probably brought... A couple out, but if any of you are looking for uh, Wendy or Peter Pan, <coughs> and I have other several wishables that you you know, if you're looking to trade some or you're looking for certain ones, let me know and DM me because I live in um, Pennsylvania, Jay Nashville. I live in Western Pennsylvania near Pittsburgh. Thank you, Arlene. Um. So I live in Western Pennsylvania. I know there's a lot of different people in YouTube that live in central or the Eastern side of Pennsylvania. There are a good bit of different YouTubers on the Western side, um, like This Our Dreams. And then there's a few that are a little bit North, some that are right over the border in Ohio. Okay, you're not far from Gettysburg. That's nice to know. Cause I do plan to head out towards Hershey and Gettysburg. Uh, my niece went to Gettysburg College. She's no longer there because she now lives in Orlando. Okay, Yaddy, thank you for joining, and we'll catch you when you come back. <clears throat> and um, and actually, yeah, I have this because she went to college there, and um, I do plan on going back. I really enjoyed the university and uh, and also the town, and I've been to Gettysburg like in, in high school and uh, middle school. And, and when we would go out there with her, I would go on sometimes the ghost tours that they offered and um, try to go out and see some of the battlefield. But a lot of times we didn't have much time because we would spend time at the football games in the afternoon because she was part of the bullet marching band. Welcome in Bob of One Stop Mouse. <clears throat> Thank you for joining. And um, so she was part of the bullet marching band out there. 
So that's the reason why we were out there. So we'd spend most of the afternoon there. And by the time we would get done with that, a lot of that area <clears throat> would close up. And then we were out there a little bit longer for her graduation weekend. And we actually got to eat in one of the um, one of the haunted type restaurants that they had. I think it was the Farnsworth house that we went to. We wanted to get into the Dobbins Tavern, but that one was booked until later in the evening. And we wanted something more at a normal eating time. So we ended up going to the Farnsworth house, um, the dining room there and everything. And then I went on a ghost tour and we went out to where the, um, <clears throat> the visitor center. So yeah, it's really nice neat out there. So, Hey, if I'm ever out there, hey, I will advertise it. Cause I try and plan to go live or at least do some videos from out that way. <clears throat> the other thing that they gave me, um, this is from the Riviera. Uh, I guess if you went on the DVC tour, they gave you that and they had extras. So I got one of these Riviera, um, little prints and <clears throat> from the DVC thing, and it's um, pretty neat. I like to have a lot of the those prints and stuff like that, so so that's pretty good. <clears throat> <laughs> so, Bob, you're back in in the club of cast members. Is that what I'm reading? I find Gettysburg amazing. I always go up to the top of Little Round Top to the memorial for Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain. Yes. Um, I know it's a long movie, the Gettysburg movie, but that was one of my, um, up in one of my favorite, favorite movies. I'm a big history buff. Um, so a lot of those things really intrigue me and stuff. Um, okay, that's cool, Bob. Congratulations on that. <clears throat> I'm really happy for you on, on that front. <clears throat> that there are a lot of people are starting to get back. Yes, Amy, Ghostbuster hunts. Yes, Timothy. <laughs> Actually, the last one I was on, I was a little disappointed in, in a way because it wasn't dark enough and you know, you're walking along and we didn't really venture off the main street uh, uh, that goes through Gettysburg. We kind of stayed on that main street instead of veering off into the alleys or go out towards um, some of the side roads where the cemetery and stuff is. You can't go into those places on those tours, <clears throat> um, but you can stand outside them and everything. Um, <clears throat> so. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. So that's the Disney merchandise that we, that I got. Um, the other thing I'll share with you, um, if any of you had seen my um, chocolate tour video, we actually have a candy store um, in our area. It's pretty good. Um, we do have a various other family owned chocolatiers um saris is pretty well known in our area although there are other ones that are well known depending on where you live in and around pennsylvania or even in and around pittsburgh um but their chocolate is very good um that's the closest to my house is sarah's chocolates uh, we do have another one that's probably about a half hour away called jean and boots candy and then another one that's about 45 minutes away called the um, the Candy Castle up in New Brighton, Pennsylvania in Beaver County. So that um, they have some pretty good candy also. Um, I know it's a little bit longer name, but I know it has like the Candy Castle as part of their name. But um, so there's various family owned chocolatiers. They all have their own different flavoring and everything. But Sarah's is pretty well known in the Cannonsburg area and in the in the grocery stores and there are some other chocolatiers that bring in their candies in the grocery stores and stuff but you can go to their store and purchase the chocolates and they have an ice cream parlor um, they do sundaes milkshakes um, banana splits you can get ice cream cones 
and um, <clears throat> and they have everything. Oh yes, please, please check out the Adventures of VP. They, they, yeah, the Adventures of VP. They're ninety away from one k. They do some really cool, awesome um, live streams from the park. Sometimes they do the home streams where they're showing the merchandise or talking about Disney or various other items um, and the lounge flies and all that fun stuff. The courthouse I have had natural experience. I heard a loud breath in my ear once and it really didn't bother me. It don't bother, really bother me. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> You're welcome, Arlene. Um, <clears throat> one of the things I like about your live streams, that it is during the day. So if I'm kind of just checking work, it's kind of nice to listen and look while I'm at work. And I, I know you shouldn't really be doing that a lot, but if I'm just checking papers and, and stuff, it, it kind of at least get a glimpse of what's going on at the Magic Kingdom or wherever you guys are at. Where my lean and usually VP are at. <laughs> so that's that's always nice there. Yeah, Timothy, I'm, it, it's funny because um, around Halloween, there is a haunted castle um, in a town um, called Brownsville, Pennsylvania. And um, I, now I, I, the name of the castle slips my mind. But... Um, it's supposed to be haunted and like different ghost hunters have gone there and everything. And my friend and I decided we'll go. We, we, you know, at Halloween, they have ghost tours and stuff like that. And, you know, and I just was kind of looking because, you know, I'm actually like, okay, am I going to actually see something, not see anything and never really end up seeing much of anything. So <laughs> it's just funny because if it is really super dark, and all of a sudden, like a light or something flashes or something, and you're like, "Oh, what is that?" or whatever. But yeah, it it it, it doesn't really. I'm usually um, the one that everybody hangs on to when we're at the haunted houses and stuff. So, um, not that I'm skeptical, but it's just I just start laughing or or whatever, you know, unless they really get me because well, I'm not paying attention around the bend. <laughs> Yes, they are a fantastic father-daughter duo. But some of the chocolates, um, some of them I had gotten for my family and some of them, the other parts of the family got. But if you really like peanut butter, they are great to get their peanut butter melt-away eggs. And they also carry other peanut butter melt-away style candies. Um, I don't see... To have one because I think I pretty much gave them away, but they are peanut butter cups with the melt away chocolate in there. With the melt away peanut butter, they have melt away bars and different things. But these are some of the novelty items I picked up. This one's like a lollipop with the bunny, with the Easter bunny. And then um, we have a dog, and sometimes I like the white chocolate just as much. So I picked up a dog bone for myself um, that's in the white chocolate. They did have one that's in regular milk chocolate. And I gave that to some of the family members that have dogs. But that's the milk chocolate bone. Um, some of the cute things that they do with the white chocolate is, is they do a fried egg and have like a yellow yolk on it. Or they do different colors. Um, with it like or, um, green or pink or yellow, um, sometimes blue. So um, with eggs and like egg shaped chocolates or um, like they have a tooth, an egg, like a fried egg type of thing. They had a milk chocolate white tooth, like your teeth. <clears throat> um, one of the things that they get, this is dark chocolate and it's an Oreo cookie that they made. And it has the uh, white chocolate and dark chocolate together. And it's an Oreo cookie. And it, it's pretty cute. And then they do do dark chocolate. Um, this is my dad's. He likes dark chocolate, so I get him a 
small dark chocolate bunny. He also got a cashew melt away egg. So that's why he just has a small bunny because and he doesn't really want all that chocolate. And the eggs are pretty nice size for um, everything. So <clears throat> that's really good. Um, and then they do like these little mini eggs. This one's a coconut one. I'd have to open it for you to actually see it. But it's like a miniaturized size egg of their larger eggs and everything, too. <laughs> but I do have a um, couple of videos there that show um, I got a milkshake that day. They're, they're pretty big, pretty big milkshakes that come in a big container. Um, they put little um, cookie, like cone type cookies in there. And a cherry whipped cream, if you want, you can get them without the whipped cream and cherry, also. But it's worth getting the <coughs> getting that. But that's pretty much all of that stuff. Um. So let's just get into some of the questions. <coughs> um, not that I'm trying to copy other people. But it was a good idea. I had fun um, watching everybody's answers and even answering my own um, my own answers in there. Like, did you play sports when you were in high school or in school? Were you someone who played sports or were you a musician or were you an artist? So if anybody um, does that, I played sports when I was a, as a kid. and in high school and middle school. I played softball and basketball. Um, I also helped out with the basketball team as a statistician and keeping the score and stuff for the varsity because I'm not that tall of a person to play. Um, I played, but I didn't play on the full varsity <laughs> type of thing. But it, you know, I learned a lot being a statistician and, and taking care of different things. Um, but I also played, but I also played, um, softball and I played as a pitcher, a backup pitcher, because when you're in high school, when you get one or two people that are really good pitchers, you kind of stick with them and you see that on the college level too. And we had a girl that was really good. And when she couldn't go, cause you could all sometimes after so many hours and everything you had, to, um, keep, keep going with the um with that and so sometimes I would get to play um play or I play with the JV and stuff with the softball and then I start playing like second base and the outfield at times just to get some playing time in <laughs> so James Ryan says he played football and basketball and baseball in high school he continued playing baseball in college so that's pretty cool I don't know if any of you are musicians out there or artists. I haven't gone to high school yet, so I wouldn't know, but I probably will do baseball. Now, do you play any sports now, Daniel? Hello, Russ. Welcome in. Do you play any sports now? Because I know when I was a kid, I played soccer also. I um, played um, in-house soccer league with the YMCA and um, the recreation department. Um, my nephews and nieces played soccer also, and my nephew played baseball, and then he played baseball for a church league also. Welcome in, Russ. Um, Penguins master said she was in the chorus from third to eighth grade. She plays instruments, uh, did cross country running, yes, because I did go and see Penguin master go running at Shenley Park in Pittsburgh. Uh, that was a pretty tough course there. Um, and she does the marching band on the drum line. So pretty cool, Penguin Master. Welcome in, Captain Akron. Akron. Captain Akron. <laughs> I should know that by now. <laughs> the Akron Arrows. <laughs> That's what I got to start thinking, Akram. <laughs> and Russ played baseball, softball, football, soccer, volleyball, basketball, ran track, 
and field, martial arts, also in the choir. And you weren't too good at sports, so. <clears throat> yeah, I, it's always fun to try, and, and then you find your niche. Um, yeah, I wasn't going to go off and be like some superstar or whatever, because I did play softball for a summertime, and it was just fun. And we had a great time and everything like that. Um, I forgot. I also, um, right now, I haven't gone back, but I do sing in my church choir. Um, I'm not the best singer, so I am kind of cautious and stuff. But then um, right now, i just been on hiatus because I had my transplant and just different things. And I just haven't really felt like I really want to go back. And, and part of it is probably because I'm not the greatest singer, but the the choir accepts me who I am, and they're great friends, and and it's been like a family for me for many years. So it's kind of hard to let that go in a sense. But if I'm not also having fun with it anymore, then it's time to kind of look at something else. And there's times eventually, who knows? I might come back. I do like. Um, a lot of different music and songs and stuff like that, but but um, yeah, that's fine. <clears throat> but that that's just myself. I've done it for a few years, and and it's just time for me to <clears throat> go on. I was a good sprinter and was a good soccer player. Choir and martial arts became my thing, plus drama and performance. <coughs> Yeah, the choir, martial arts, martial arts. I know a lot of people that are in the martial arts and have been moving up the ranks. And even some adults I know are doing it along with their kids and stuff. Um, the drama and performances, that that's great. Because I know um, there's times, not that I regret not trying out. I, I did um, play the violin many years ago and then I tried the clarinet. But then I kind of gave it all up because that's not the instruments I really wanted to play. And and I just kind of gave it up altogether. So um, so it, it, that might have been a little bit of a regret of not participating in the music side of different things. Because now I kind of wish that even if I were to learn piano or guitar or something, just to have that as a little background. I had great technique to hit the high notes using my martial arts, I'm sure. <laughs> and you're in the core chorus, Daniel. That's good. Because a lot of times, I don't know if your high school does it, but a lot of the high schools in this area, um, they do high school musicals and various musicals from, I know some are older, like South Pacific and, and um, the Music Man to the new stuff. That they have out there, legally blonde, and um, I know one one high school they did the musical Zorro. That was really cool. The musical Zorro, um, Shrek the musical. Um, so there, there's a lot of opportunity there, especially if you, you know, you like the acting and the music part of it. Because a lot of times, I know um, the high school that my niece and her two brothers. Um, went to and my one nephew that they have a hard time getting guys to even be in the chorus and and able to really want to sing and do the they a lot of them are good actors and that but they have a hard time with the singing part of it because they're not in the chorus and they're not in, in and that and then, and then you wonder well i see you know other kids in these things how come they can't get guys in their high school and stuff so i guess it just depends on what's you know who's teaching it and what the school actually offers because there's a lot of girls out there that are in the chorus and and stuff like that so it's pretty cool okay let's move on um here, here's a question and i know for me i had to think about this but what is a favorite non-disney vacation that you may take i know I know for myself, it was hard to even think about it because it's been, I've always um, 
as a family, we, in the, in the older days, we didn't go to a lot of the places that people talk about, like Myrtle Beach and Ocean City, Maryland and stuff. I started only going to those places when I got to the high, late high school, college age. <coughs> and adult age so and i can't even think of when the last time i was on a non-disney vacation besides um i i i do know now but i had to think about it but um welcome back happily ever yanni thank you no problem and i know it's dinner time and some people need to do the dishes or whatever so but i do appreciate you joining in cruising Yes, happily ever yeti. That that would be certainly a great um, non Disney thing. Um, I've been on two cruises, but it's been a long time. Um, I keep thinking about doing that. Um, if I do do it, I have to be very careful um, <clears throat> with that. But I've also known other people who have had transplants and stuff and been on the ships. They're just more careful about cleaning things and keeping their areas clean and everything like that. Um, but I know for me, I had two big trips. One was actually a mission trip. And it was something that friends of mine had started a group and they started this mission trip. And um, a lady that plays our organ in my church, she has gone all a lot and talked about it. And she got like another guy to go that was from my church. That was one of the pastors. <coughs> Paul is doing the dishes tonight. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Camping, that's fun. Alaska or Japan, maybe a cruise around the Mediterranean. That would be great. Um, but I went to Zimbabwe, Africa. Um, for me, that was a once in a lifetime trip. Um, unfortunately, having the transplant and stuff, um, it would not really be conducive for me to go there um, because you do have to have a lot of safety precautions about drinking. You can't drink the actual water there. You have to have bottled water and just different things. Um, you have to be careful with the different foods you eat and also the hygiene because sometimes um, the place like we stayed at a missionary type of place and although we had water or not, it depended on the electricity that ran that water and stuff. So sometimes you were lucky you were able to get clean kind of properly. So so it, it, that's pretty much off limits for me. The other thing was, is I was able to go to England for a John Wesley Heritage Tour and we went all around England. So I'm very grateful for those two trips. I do plan to try to go to Europe sometime to Italy or somewhere. Let's see. I'm sorry. I don't. I want to do a Canadian road trip. I just need to get a passport and find time. Yes. You need to get that passport. <clears throat> I would recommend it. Um, yes. I want to go to Alaska and Hawaii. Um, those are kind of bucket list things and, and everything. Um, I had my first cruise in the Mediterranean June of 2020. Needless to say, we didn't make it. In fact, I knew friends that all had trips booked for Mediterranean cruises for last summer. And of course, we all know what happened there. <clears throat> I went up the inside passage on the ferry right alongside the Towgrass National Forest, Alaska. That would be really cool. Um, I had a friend who lived in Alaska. Um, he was a park ranger at Mount McKinley um, National Park. Um, one of the reasons why I want to go there um, he actually died in a car accident many years ago there. They do have a memorial for him, but I really would like to go to Alaska to see that backwoods country. And, and probably the best thing for me would be to do the cruise type of thing and then be able to see different parts. Yes, Penguin Master will need to talk to Jonathan Chong. <clears throat> so, yeah, cruising. Um, like when I was a kid, we went to, um, and I know for Jeff, this our dreams, that wasn't like a big thing. But we went to Niagara Falls. And 
Erie, Pennsylvania, because in those days, the beaches, they're, they're still nice beaches and everything and the amusement park and stuff. But that was our kind of big vacation of going up to Niagara Falls over in Canada. And the, Amer the American side didn't really have as much as they do now. But um, <clears throat> we would go over to Canada and go through all the museums and everything like that. <coughs> and and stuff so uh and lake erie so we did a lot there and then we ventured out to the amusement park cedar point king's island Hershey park um we eventually got to the jersey shore of uh, atlantic city and wildwood new jersey i'd like to do a cross-country road trip and visit some of the places i've been but didn't get to explore while on the road from nyc to san francisco yes that would be that would be a great trip to do um i had friends um not last summer but two summers ago they did that with their kids because their son was going to be graduating and they figured this will be our last kind of long family vacation and they did some really cool things they um my friend Corey, he had family out in idaho and they went to the streams and went fishing, kind of like that river runs through it type of thing. <laughs> and they they just did a lot of stuff. Um, when I flew to Las Vegas, I made sure that I went to the Grand Canyon. I did the Hoover Dam. I actually did a um, architectural tour of the Hoover Dam. Then you got to go into the tunnels, wear the hard hats, and actually really get to explore that. Um, went to um, flew to the Grand Canyon and did almost all the stuff that you could almost do. It didn't go down into the canyon, but came close to a lot of that. Um, then I flew to Disneyland, California for the day. I flew out in the morning, went to Disneyland, um, spent most of the day there. Um, and it was Christmas season. And it felt really weird being there because it was like, oh, this is a little different. But now I really would love to get out to Disneyland. I'll wait until probably 2022, plan that trip and go um, as things start to open up and get back to some type of normalcy. And I really want to explore both parks. <laughs> but yeah, Russ. That would be fun to do because there's a lot of stuff in between. And I also always thought about, uh, you know, kind of skipping certain things and flying to a certain point and then driving around and do that and then fly back type of thing also. So uh, it does take some planning, though. Um, I know if I wouldn't have had the health crisis that I had a couple of years ago, a friend of mine planned a trip for her and her kids. And I said, boy, I wish I could go and everything. And she was like, hey, if you want to go or whatever. But I knew I couldn't just because of the situation I was in. But it, it was, it, they did all of California, drove, you know, flew and did the whole coast of California and a couple other places. And it was really cool. Okay, you have it all mapped out. That's great. <laughs> I always thought about that, just get in the car and start driving. But at this point, I can't take off like a whole month. I probably could, but then there goes all my vacation. So it had to be strategically planned that, you know, I'm not dying by the end of the year because I don't have any vacation time or something there. <laughs> <coughs> I do want to get up to New England. Um, at least the Boston and Massachusetts and then Maine type of area. Um, so that that's something that's on my bucket list too. <clears throat> yeah, Alaska would be great. Um, so Yadi, you know, the different stuff there. Um, <laughs> well, I know a lot of you, some of you do live in Florida that are on the stream. And for you, you know, you do go to Disney. And I know, I don't know, VP and them, if you guys go 
um, to SeaWorld and Universal. I think I've seen you guys there. And I know like the, the Philly crew, Ron and Meredith, have been to Universal. And I know Russ goes to, you know, you know on occasion. Have any of you gone to any non-Disney attractions or parks or drove to the coastlines, whether you went towards Cocoa Beach or Daytona Beach or you went to Clearwater or somewhere along the coastline on the West Coast? <clears throat> yeah, Boston does look nice. I always wanted to do um, one of the bus tour companies here out of Pittsburgh. Um, Always did a 4th of July trip where you got tickets to the Boston Pop show for the 4th of July and everything. And um, I always wanted to go do that. And then they had a Halloween um, right around during the Halloween season of going to Salem, Massachusetts. <clears throat> but I also know, you know, it's probably fun, good to talk to people because some people are like, oh, that's just a tourist trap. Go see this instead or whatever but yeah boston has a lot of history historical stuff and and the modern stuff also <clears throat> i go to the beach a ton yes the beach that you were at today looked uh very relaxing in fact i was just sitting there like man i want to go to the beach and up north right now it's too cold to be out on the jersey beaches and stuff i mean you could go but it would be windy and cold and in fact, like June is, um, we used to go the Wildwood like mid June towards the end of June, and the water is still cold. It doesn't really warm up till almost August. Where like if you're down in Delaware, Ocean City, Maryland, or Myrtle Beach, it's a little warmer. You can walk the Freedom Trail in Boston. You would love that. Even. Yes, that would that would be great if you are coming to New England, you'll have to visit us in the White Mountains during the fall. Yes, all that, um, the fall foliage and all of that stuff. I go to Salem to visit the ghost of Zip. <laughs> His family. <laughs> well, <hey. clears throat> but yeah, I, um, yeah, there's just a lot. And and I know, like, in my area, too, a lot of people like the – now it's a little bit harder because you do need a passport or if you have one of those pass cards. But I, I recommend the passport because if something would happen and you have to fly home or something, that will get you able to go wherever. But um, a lot of people do like to go up to um, the Canada area, up to Newfoundland and – um, New Brunswick and the St. John's area, um, Quebec, um, the Ottawa, Ottawa area. I was going to say the Ottawa Senators. That's how I do it. I've been to Toronto and Niagara Falls, but that's the furthest I've gone into Canada. But I know people that like to go up and do fishing trips way up in Canada. And I've been in, the, in Canada over by Detroit, but never been way up there in Canada. <clears throat> um, but some of the non-Disney parks, uh, I know when I lived there, actually at Dis uh, in Orlando, I don't do it as much now because I pretty much like, I'll go to Universal for a day or two. It's not all every trip, um, but I've gone to SeaWorld a couple times on different trips. Um, I haven't. I've been down to the Kennedy Space Center. Um, I haven't been there in a while. I really would like to get back to there at some point um, and probably drive over to Tampa. I've been to the Busch Gardens, but it's been a while also in the coastline there. I've been down to Cocoa Beach, went into the original Ron Johns. <clears throat> I've been to Toronto and Calgary, but couldn't understand the language. It, yeah, um, I've only done SeaWorld once. <clears throat> yeah, it's hard to um, gauge like SeaWorld. Now they have like different rides. So if you are a thrill rider, um, SeaWorld's pretty cool. If, as long as, the only problem with SeaWorld, it just seems like it's pretty crowded. And I know like um, in 2019 when I was down there with my sister and I, we went to SeaWorld and we did get to do the 
one coaster. I can't think of it right now, but I'll think of, yeah, I'll think about it. When we did the Atlantis ride, but it was also the coaster that was right there that used to have a 3D effect to it, but they didn't don't do that now. I don't think. But we couldn't get on Make On, and we couldn't get on the Stingray one. But we did do the Stingray at one other time, but <clears throat> just because it was crowded for the rides, I rode the Penguin ride. And they did not. They took the little cart, but it takes you right into the Penguin exhibit on the card on that side but where i was yeah the kraken there you go james the kraken yes yes it does look crowded um everywhere right now i know um i saw the notice from universal that you know they're pretty much sold out i saw a notice with um disney world that they're pretty much sold out of reservations uh not sold out but yeah park reservations i uh i'm saying so it just seems crowded everywhere. Sea World seems crowded. I mean, I don't think, I think it's just going to keep getting crowded. Um, it's not going to lull here like you think because Easter's over and stuff. Because what's going to happen is the Florida schools are going to start getting off here soon. Out of school, the college kids are going to um, start getting out. And it's just going to start just getting busy. And my, my lane asked me to go to Universal. <clears throat> um, my, my thing with Universal, um, we were all, I was always thrill rider and stuff like that. For Islands of Adventure, I mean, they do have rides that kids can go on if they're not big thrill rides, like the, in the um, Cat in a Hat area and maybe Spider-Man type of thing if they're tall enough but it um but to me if they're not thrill riders or they're not tall enough i don't think it's really worth going to universal in a sense now we did take my nephew nephews when they were younger they were tall for their ages but there were some things that um <clears throat> that they could ride and did um <clears throat> And they were satisfied. They and we did a lot of the shows type of things, especially in the original park. They have the animal show. They loved animals. They love now that that's all kind of getting closed down. But they love going back into that Curious George area, and they would get soaking wet and play with the ball pits and stuff. Now they have to. They're getting rid of all that stuff most likely, and um, they, they had the Jaws ride so they could ride that. Um, and some of the front stuff and everything, but over at Islands of Adventure, most of the other rides, um, they could do the cat in a hat stuff and Spider Man because they were tall enough for that, but like the coaster stuff, they couldn't do now. They can, <clears throat> but they do have a lot of cool stuff if you're really into Harry Potter and you're old enough. I would say, um, it, it's worth checking out, but also try and do the other rides. Um, I know they're going to have that Velociraptor coaster starting to open June 10th. Um, I was pretty disappointed because we went in June of 2019 at the end of June and they didn't have their stuff together for Hagrid's and it was such a mess that we never even got to do Hagrid's. And I still haven't ridden Hagrid's even though I've been down the, um, to Orlando um, a couple times after that June trip, but I they were quick trips to Orlando and everything. So I do plan on trying to get over there for Hagrid's and then sometime in the fall to hopefully do the Velociraptor and, and everything. <clears throat> so, but I do enjoy the Harry Potter stuff. Like it took me a while to even see Diagon Alley, um, 2019 June. That was the first time I saw Diagon Alley. Um, I knew I wanted to buy a wand because I've seen people doing the tricks and stuff. Yeah, it's probably not a big deal or whatever, but it, it was kind of fun. I probably should have bought the wand, had my niece pick out the wand that she wanted and bought it and then just used it while I was there and then let her keep that particular wand. But I bought the Harry Potter wand. I told her she could have it if she liked, but she likes Herm Hermione Granger a little better. <laughs> in a sense, but 
I'm like, hey, if you want to keep it and you go to Universal, you can use it. <laughs> but let me see. I missed some comments, so I'm sorry about that. <clears throat> but yeah, Mylene's um, a thrill rider or likes the Harry Potter. Um, I was pretty impressed with the Transformer ride. Um, it is kind of like Spider Man. I thought it was a tad better than Spider Man. And now people will probably be like, oh my gosh, you know, boss me. But um, but there's some cool things there. And, um, you know, I do like a Dr. Seuss area. Um, the, the only drawback to Universal, if you're going to go and vlog, um, want to be live streaming, you're going to have to live stream, but you can't really ride rides. Now, I've seen people on that little trolley um, Dr. Seuss ride, the Sneetches ride. And you can kind of live stream there. And then I've seen a couple people doing some of the other types of things. Or I've seen people actually with their GoPros kind of like stuck to them on Hagrid's and things. So, um, so I'm not sure how they feel about that. Um, I know, I know a live streamer. She goes to Halloween Horror Nights. They buy the annual pass. And they go almost the whole weekends. And she'll take you along with them in the house. She puts you in the bag. And you can hear what's going on in the haunted houses. She will not show them. But, you know, but then she'll show you around of all the activities outside the haunted houses and what you can do. And what to do, like when you go to Halloween Horror Nights. You know, if you go a Friday or a Saturday or a Saturday night. You know, you want to go and get the scream and stay. And, um, you know, they used to eat at Finnegan's. And then once they were done with Finnegan's, they get lined up in a grouping. And then they got escorted to two different houses. And they had different sections of the park that that they had these little corral things for scream and stay. And, and then she shows you around what food offerings and you know, what people are walking around scaring you at the park and, and stuff. But it really, I really want to go down for Halloween Horror Nights because a lot of that. <laughs> Halloween Horror Nights doesn't interest me at all. <laughs> yeah, my sister would say that too. But one, she was never wanting to be scared, like get scared like that. She never liked the haunted, scary stuff like that. and. Um, and then also like when you, a lot of times, um, it does draw in a different crowd type of people. So, you know, you have to ex expect that and the crowds and that, but she did end up going, um, in 2019 Halloween time and actually had a good time. Like the couple of the houses, um, they did, um, the old fashioned Universal Monsters and um, Ghostbusters, and those ones that she really enjoyed. But her husband and her boys and her daughter, they would go, that they liked that. But I, I can understand, yeah, if it doesn't interest you, then hey, you know, it's not something I would do. <clears throat> I never really, I went once or twice back in the day, but for me at those times, it was kind of like a, I don't want to say that it was a drink fest or whatever, because I'm sure, is, you know, now I haven't been there, so I can't really tell. But sometimes you have to watch what that crowd is like with that. And that's like like when they do the, the actual Mardi Gras nights, it's kind of like that, too. <laughs> yeah, that's true, Bruce. <laughs> If I want to be scared, I'll just go over to Jeff and Angie. <laughs> That's funny. <clears throat> but yeah, go and try it, Arlene. I mean, they do have very good um, deals with Universal, especially if you're a Florida resident. Um, go, go on their website, check out the prices for Florida residents, um, their annual passes. They I think that ended, but they they always seem to extend some type of offer. But um, you got three extra months free onto your annual pass if you think you're going to go 
more than once or twice. I think a lot of different YouTubers, when Universal first opened, ended up buying the annual passes because they were the only show in town at that point and they needed, you know, they wanted to get out and they did that. Um, so, so yeah, I, I don't know. I, I've always gone to Universal since it opened because I lived down there when it opened. And, and I'm not saying I go every trip because if I'm staying at Disney, um, you know, you have to, if, if you have a car, that's fine. You, it's easy to drive over, pay the parking. But either way, you got to either pay a Uber driver, which is probably a lot cheaper than renting if you're not, if you're not, if you're renting a car and then having to pay their 20 or whatever it is nowadays. The park down there is probably 25, 25 or 30. Who knows where it might be cheaper just to pay the Uber driver uh, or the Lyft guy. I know with Lyft for me, it seemed like right before my Disney trips, I'd get half off on any of my Lyft trips of up to 10 trips or whatever. I didn't use Lyft all the time because that's the only place I ever use Lyft. And, and it's not, um, and not really um, something that I use around here because it's not needed for me around here. But down there, um, it, it was good to get somewhere real quick or whatever. That's what I did, but I really haven't used it because I can't do as much as I thought discipline. Yeah, that's understandable, Russ. They, that's the only drawback, in my opinion. If you are a bigger person, and it, sometimes it's not even the width wide, it could be tall wise too, or fitting into their coasters and stuff. I know supposedly, there's certain rows like on the Hulk or um, I think like if you're on the end on the one Harry Potter thing, but it's still to me, it's not really, um, it's not really friendly for that type of person at Universal compared to other places. <clears throat> so I could see that being a disappointment and stuff. Cause then y'all you're really stuck with is like, the show type rides or the show or <coughs> or whatever. And yeah, it's not, yeah, I could see it being disappointing. <clears throat> yes, um, some housekeeping. And I know the Disney Nerd Herders go on at 7 p.m. I just saw Pete McDevitt go on for his um, creator. He usually brings on a new creator or a creator that's been around and talk with them so you get to know them at 7 p.m i know d and g explorers goes at eight um one stop mouse i know he has someone uh, uh usually interviewing um a creator also um 9 p.m monarch moments with michelle and hannah dis and that crew and 10 p.m if you like trivia usually griswold family vacate does trivia and i believe it's landon's birthday tonight too so he might be doing an earlier show or doing something with that. So go ahead and check them out. I do thank everyone for joining. If you haven't um, already hit that thumbs up button, it would be much appreciated if you did. It does help out the channel. Let YouTube know that, that um, you know that you liked what you were seeing, and just helps out the channel in general. Gets my stuff watched if you're new and you're considering subscribing, check out all the different videos and live streams. I'm hoping to get back to Disney like real soon. Um, and I plan on doing some sort of live streams here or there. Oh, yes. Hitchhiking Bones will be guest on Monarch Moments tonight. Yes, I did see that. I, that's the problem. I see these things and I can't remember who the guests are. Thank you, Russ. But, um, I'm hoping to get there and do a few live streams and show different things. Um, <clears throat> so usually Disney, I'll show Disney merchandise if I get to the parks or if I do shop Disney because my Disney store is closed these days and a lot of other ones are. That's why I'm hoping to go out east at some time because they do have a Disney store outlet out that way out in Hershey, Pennsylvania. And I hope to show Hershey Park and the um, Chocolate World 
right now it's crazy busy at Hershey PA. Uh, I saw a YouTuber out there last weekend for Easter weekend, and he said the place was packed and their hours weren't very long and it was just crazy busy. And I'm guessing people are just getting tired of staying home and they just want to get out. So I'm guessing it's going to be like that and you're just going to have to accept it. I know a month from now, the local amusement park here, Kennywood, I'll be going out there. I can live stream in and around the park. Um, I can't live stream on rides. They do not permit that. I have done the train ride. I did, did a live stream and the, the train that takes you along the river, the Monongahill River and stuff. And then I also um, have done the one ride called... Um, Oh, I can't think of it now. It, it, it's called the Old Mill. Welcome in, Melissa Mouse Talk and Garky Carroll. Thank you for joining. Um, I do appreciate that. But um, so I'm hoping to go out east. There are a couple other smaller amusement parks that if I uh, you know try to go over the weekends or or take like a Monday or Friday or something and go take off and everything. So. <laughs> But that's pretty much it for what I have this evening. I don't want to be um, overlapping a lot of different shows. I know things go over. I do appreciate everyone who has stopped in. Um, it's much appreciated. I hope to see more of you in the chats. Look for surprise live streams. I've been thinking about um, planning a day after work, possibly going over to the Pittsburgh Zoo or the Carnegie Science Center, kind of show you around or even walk around down by the river there, the Allegheny and Ohio River and um, on the North Shore. So look out for that or even the History Museum where the dinosaurs are. I'm about to book a trip to Disneyland if I can't get in the parks there. <laughs> <laughs> now, what, how can you do that, Russ? Because I thought right now it's just the California residents because I was like, Boy, I should run a hotel or rent a, uh, an apartment for a month so I could go to Disneyland. <laughs> but I don't know if I really want to go right away because I, I, I mean, I know the place gets massive busy anyway, but I'm sure it's going to be massive busy either way. But yeah, I can understand your point. Um, so, and I know, um, <clears throat> yeah, that, that's the, thing that kind of stinks right now is, is they haven't really thought about opening at least annual pass passes to Florida residents or whatever. But I guess that just brings another influx of people until they can actually increase the capacity and everything. <laughs> Garrett's adopting you. <laughs> hey, I thought about that going, can I use your address, Garrett? <laughs> <laughs> or get D&G Explorers or Pepper Tree Villa. Can I live in the garage? <laughs> Villa. So, but I'm going to head out. That way you can go enjoy all the other streams. Make sure that notification bell is um, hit and darkened. That way you'll know when I go live. I'm going to try to be more intentional of getting my Wednesday night 6 p.m. streams getting a thumbnail up there but sometimes I kind of lose track of days and then I'm like what am I going to talk about and everything like that so I'm glad we are going right when spring break is ending in most places yeah that's what um, I, I'm thinking I'm hoping there might be a little bit of a law before all the Florida people get out of school and stuff because they start getting out in May and, and things and then I know some of the schools here in Pennsylvania by the end of May and the beginning of June, they're done and everything. So, so yeah, so hopefully there'll be some type of little law. Cause I know the other night, um, Maria was at the magic kingdom and she was walking around the queue at the haunted mansion. And it looked like there was nobody on the ride at haunted mansion. And I'm like, is there anybody in the park or it must've been closer to closing or something because it looked like it was pretty empty and in the line because she was wandering all through the 
the cube telling you about the, the little storyline and puzzle that they have there with the um, with the queue line. So, and I didn't see anybody standing in line or anything like that. Have. So it seems like it's better to go hit the parks up later in the evening. Although Epcot just seems to get busier at night since it's the latest park open till 11 o'clock because everybody park hops because they're not ready to go home and who wants to try to go to the down the Disney Springs unless you're going to go eat or something and it's just busy and then you don't even know if you're going to get into Disney Springs so you can go over to Epcot if they're still letting people in and it seems like most of the people I watch they're able to get into the parks park hopping so I don't know if any of them ever had trouble trying to get into a park or or not they never really said they usually seem to go right in okay everyone i do thank you for joining um this time i'm going to go ahead and go um but i do thank you make sure you hit that thumbs up button and i will see you all in the chats and let the adventures begin and i do thank everyone have a great night and have a great rest of the week bye everyone Thank <laughs> you.